Okay, I have uh, Mr. Harry from uh, Airborne with me. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm good, thank you. Uh, we were just talking off camera that we've been up, uh, or we had a nice late night last night, uh, which you were part of, <laughs> and uh, we had a listen to the record um, with, you know, 30 odd fans, which was really cool. Just to, you know, that was the first time uh, people aside from journos and, and media have been able to hear the record. So it's always a different experience having it unleashed to fans, yeah. um, which was really cool. And w what were kind of some of the first reactions that fans had? I saw a lot of rocking out. Yeah, there was a lot of rocking out. It was good. I mean, it was uh, we we set out with the intention of creating a kind of good time rock and roll album. That's what it should be. It should be the soundtrack to a Saturday night. And uh, Thursday night last night got pretty rocking in the end. So, <laughs> would you do you reckon because the album is quite you know um, sort of like a short, sharp one-two punch? Do you reckon you'd be able to play the whole thing? We'd love to. I mean, we were, the, the, funnily enough, during uh, during the playback last night, just seeing people reacting to songs, and um, it's one of those things. Where, like we've now lived with the with the music and the and the record being kind of in the can for quite a few months now. You sort of your emotions toward each song kind of swing a little bit. Like there'd be a song that two days ago I would have thought, you know, oh, I'm not sure. Like you know, um, you know, for me that might be eighth or ninth in line for, for the songs on the record to be adding into the live set. And then seeing people reacting to that song, it's like, oh, shit. You know, we were sitting there just uh, brainstorming ideas for, oh, shit, it would be really cool just to um, maybe do um, the full record at some point mm. and, and just drop it into the set. Because the way that it was created, super live, it, it just feels really natural that it's going to translate to the stage. Yeah. What, I found it really interesting because you were talking about how um, essentially like a lot of the takes that you've used were first takes. So look, what, what made you want to kind of think, you know, let's do that first take, that was the best one type thing? Maybe it stems from insecurity or something like that because initially in the first week or two in the studio, we were the ones kind of pushing back on oh, really? those first takes. And it was Dave Cobb, our producer, who was all about that. That, that was his thing. Um, and they were the takes that immediately he was super passionate about. Um, and I guess from our point of view, it, it, it took a bit of adjustment because we're in the studio, um, in our heads, we're sort of learning our way through the song and figuring out which part goes with which and um, at what point, how many measures to play the verse before we go into a chorus. And, um, you know, at, at that point, it's all just on, you know, eye contact and just that sort of visual um, interaction and energy from actually playing live in a room. It's, you know, we, we definitely got to the point of really understanding where Cobb comes from with that attitude um, and really bought into it um, after, you know, the first week of adjusting and it just being almost culture shock a little bit yeah. that... You know, we're sitting there going, oh, but we, we made, yeah, we, like, I made a mistake in the second verse because we didn't even know the fucking second verse. We're just, we're making it up on the fly. And um, he's all about capturing, like, the band at the moment of inspiration, just dancing that knife's edge of, like, you don't know the song properly. Um, you, you know, the sort of tension of playing the song for the first time brings out, um, you know, just an added... 10% of just intangible energy that you just can't recapture. Do you think that, um, you know, like you said about mistakes and things like that, do you think people will actually hear anything? Or do you think it's just you being like, oh, God, no, I, I, I fucked that up? If we were particularly worried about a, you know, mistake, and oh, I think that really stands out, maybe we need to change that, um, Cobb would just chuck on, you know, a whole lot of love. Okay. And it's like, oh, bullshit, I've never heard that before. And he's like, yeah. No one listens to a record like you were going to listen to it in terms of really dissecting, oh, really? dissecting the hell out of it. So, um, That's so yeah. interesting. Same with those Led Zeppelin records, Beatles records, all these amazing albums. Um, they've got mistakes all over them. So, with, with that idea, you know, like talking about rock and roll and things like that, I feel that you know, a, a, like many years ago, rock and roll was quite dangerous and things like that. Do you think it's still kind of dangerous, or do you think it's been kind of like diluted a little bit? The music, uh, hard rock scene, metal, rock and roll, um, you know, I guess that little family of, of genres of music and bands um, had have sort of reached a bit of a tipping point where it's gotten to the point where everything, the pursuit of 
perfection has almost gone as far as it can go. Um, uh, you find that obviously a lot of records get to the point they're you know start sounding very very similar when they're all chasing the same thing. So you mentioned danger before. That was a big sort of click word or a key word no, really. for Cobb. That was his thing. That no, you know, that, fuck perfection. Like that's dangerous. That's cool. That's that's something that I want to chuck on and and listen to. And um, you know, he'd reference being a kid, and it's something that we were all able to relate to. Being fifteen, putting on a record, and you want to be on that stage with that band playing that song. It's it's that kind of feeling. So I feel that for a lot of people, rock and roll is a sense of escapism, almost. And what do you think it is that, you know, makes people all come together with this one unified thing of rock and roll and, you know, that being their sort of escape? Well, like you said, I, I guess that, that sort of is the nail on the head there, that it is an escape and um, whether you're a band member or a member of the audience or whatever it may be um especially the live show or um obviously the chance to put on a record or just shut off the outside world with the headphones on or or something like that it's reached a point where it's like an underdog form of music or it's been perceived to be an underdog form of music and the people who really do care about it um almost embrace that notion to be like you know we're family we are together language barriers often you know put up certain fences in communication between someone from the uk or someone from brazil or or whatever it may be but um you know everyone understands like a metallica t-shirt a motorhead t-shirt an acdc t-shirt it's a common language and um it's like a it's like the the best icebreaker that there is in terms of um, you might have all the communication issues with a person in the world, but, <laughs> but Motorhead is <laughs> Motorhead. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so, what for you does um, rock and roll mean, like in in the wider scope of things? Um, I guess we're, we're always, um, in a funny way, very finicky about the distinction between rock. And rock and roll. Oh, right. um, so you know, there's certainly a lot of rock bands um, around, but rock and roll is uh, coming back to that feel thing again. It's got a lot to do with feel, um, swagger. Whether it's you know, whether it's like a boogie because it's rooted in the blues. Um, that's something that you know we're always really passionate about when we have a discussion. That yeah, it's not rock. It's rock and roll. People can be from different walks of life or in different um, periods of their life, whether it's, um, you know, we, we meet a lot of people who have had a couple of kids or something like that and they stop going to gigs for a period of time just, you know, to raise a family and do all that sort of stuff, but they always come back to it and you, you, <laughs> you, get, you then get um, those parents being the ones who bring their children to the gigs and um, it's... It's, uh, it's an embracing thing in that sense of, you know, you're always welcome back. You've had some time off. Yeah, you've had, had your time. sabbatical. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now let's get back and let's rock. So it's, it's, all, it's that. It's the, it's, the, um, it's the family element of it that, you know, we, we really love. We, we try to not have a, you know, huge distinction between band and fans. We're, we're all rock and roll fans. We're rock and rollers and... Um, trying to create something that's a group of group of one in every venue we play awesome well thanks so much for uh, having a chat man i really appreciate it thank you all right